Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this FNIRSI portable DC power supply. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Let me get the shrink wrap off of here. So if we look on the side, it says multiple protection, multiple preset groups, continuously adjustable, PC software connection, we have some specs listed on the back. Here's a couple of them. DC voltage input is five volts to 32 volts. Input current is 100 milliamps to five amps. Output voltage is five to 30 volts. Output current is zero to five amps. Output power is zero to 150 watts. And then we have lots of protections built in. We also have some notes here. It says it operates in step down mode. So the input voltage needs to be higher than the output voltage. So let's get this open. Here we have the manual. So it looks like it starts on page 16. So I'm not going to cover everything in here. You'll want to read it on your own. So this shows the panel. This has DC and USB type C input. We have an LCD screen. We have banana plug and screw terminal outputs. Here we have the specs listed again. This talks about the operation. Here's the display screen. This talks about using it. Here's the menu interface. This talks about using it with a PC. Here we have some notes. Product info. So let's pull this out. So here we have the device. Here we have the output terminals, we have a knob, power, here we have the input, we have power delivery, and DC, and then we have a switch for PD or DC here. Then we have micro USB to hook it up to a PC, we have rubber feet on the bottom, and then this screen will tilt up to help with your viewing angle. Pull this out. Here we have the cables, we have USB A to micro USB and we have positive and negative leads. I think that's everything here. So you do need to supply your own cable for powering this. So here I have a PD power supply, I'll plug that in. And they have a USB type C cable. So I'll go here and make sure it's on PD and I'll plug into the PD. And there it turned on. Now you don't have to use a plug-in adapter. Here I have a battery, turn it on, plug in here, and now we're pulling from the battery. So it looks like the volts in is 20.26. So let's go home here. So I need to get into the settings there to change the language. So I'll press the home button, press left, right. Okay, so these are the main settings here. There, I'm switched to English. So to go to the next setting, I'll press the button on the right. Okay, so I have that on English now, hit home, and we're back to the main screen. So I can peel the plastic off here. Oops. There's a little plastic here too. Okay, so I'm going to get familiar with this, and then we'll come back and we'll do some tests with it. Okay, so I've been playing around with this a little bit, so I think I can demonstrate it. So it doesn't seem to have an on or off, so when you plug it in, it turns it on. So we're plugged into USB-C. We have the 20 volt power delivery input. Now, if you want to go up to the 30 volts, you're gonna to want to get a power adapter and switch it here. So if we press home, it will take us to the settings screen and we can change the over voltage, over current protection, things like that. We have the system page and the about. So let me get back out of here. Now, if I press the M key, that will change the memory. So let me zoom in. So it says M1 here. If we click through this, there's six memories. If we want to change the memory, we can hold down on this and we can change the voltage and amps. But we can also just change the settings here. So I'll hit the button here on the right and that will take us into the voltage so I can modify this. Now I can also hit left, right to go to the different digits. So I'll change this one to 12. Press it again, we'll go down here to amps. We'll change that to five. So here I have an H7 halogen light bulb. I'm going to connect this up and I have the power off here. Okay. So if I press the button on the side, this will turn on. And that can get very hot. I'm not going to run it for a long time. So if I want to dim that, I'll go in here and we'll change this voltage. Oops, I went over too far. Let's 
do that. So here it's dimmer. So this is the main display. We also have the waveform display. So I'll hold down on this, and this will take us to the waveform display. So I'll show this here. I'm going to press on the adjust button. Let's go to voltage. Now you want to be careful doing this because you could accidentally turn something the wrong way and turn the voltage too high. But I'm low enough right now, I'm not worried. So here I'm changing the voltage, and it's changing the light. And we can see on the graph in real time the voltage it's at. So here on the display we can see the volts, the amps, and the watts. So we can also lock this. I'll hold down on the side, and this will lock it. So if you're setting this up to power something long term, you don't want people messing with it, you can lock it. Obviously they can unlock it, but it can kind of slow people down if they're messing with it. Oh, and I guess I didn't show this part plugging in. These are the banana plugs. They plug in here, or these screw terminals can unscrew, and you can put a wire around that. So this has some nice functionality on it in the interface. I don't know if I covered every single thing, but I covered quite a bit. But where you can really take this next level is using it on a computer. So over here I have a PC, so I'm going to take the micro USB cable and plug that in here. And I plugged it into the back of my computer. Now this seems like it will actually power this, so you could maybe power devices with it using the computer's power. But I want to use power delivery, so actually I think it's best to plug power delivery in first and then plug it into your computer. Because when I plug just this in up here where it has the input voltage, it was still saying 5 instead of 20. So let's take a look at the software. So I had a little confusion installing this software. If you go to the company's website to download it, I didn't find an app, but you'll find the manual and you'll find the firmware. So you want to download the firmware, and in the firmware is the application, and it's called the FNIRSI Power Supply. So let's open that up. So here we have the interface. I'll make this full screen. And this is not in English, so I'm going to hit the gear here. I'll hit the middle here for language settings, and I'll change that to English. So here we can see an interface similar to how we saw on the device, but with a few more features on it. If we go in the bottom left here, we can see the voltage, so let's just change this to 12 and we'll change the amperage to 5. So this isn't currently connected. If we go to the upper right corner, we have USB. It says COM1. So I'll hit online, and it says connection failed. I'll click on this, and I'll try COM2, and that was successful. So you can try your different COM ports until it connects up. In the middle here, we have our groups, so you can set those. But let's try this. Oh. So let's try this. On the bottom right, I'll hit open. And the light turned on, hit it again, it turns off. We can see the graph here. You can record the graph. You can hit this button to download it. So this is very similar to the interface we had. Now if we go to advanced, we'll have more features. Over here on the bottom left, we have a table of different voltages. So you can set up profiles with the voltages and current. So if you're charging batteries, you can set this up to match your battery's charging profile. We also have voltage scan and current scan. So let's change the amperage on this to five. And we'll start at 1 volt, and we'll stop at 12. Delay every second. 1 volt increments. So let's run this. So every second, it's going up another volt. And now it's at 12 volts. So the PC software adds a lot more functionality to this power supply. So that's the FNIRSI portable DC power supply. I really like the compact size of this. This could easily fit in a work bag. It has this nice adjustable screen so it makes it easy to read. And it's very easy to use with the buttons on the device itself or using the PC interface. So a supply like this would be great for electronics project, for testing things. You could use it to charge batteries. It's very handy in that it powers with power delivery or a DC jack. So you could use this with a portable power station. And again, you can connect this up with a large power bank too. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.